Hey guys, Jeff here. I've been having some more fun with the Thunder Bikes. We're going to get on that, uh, uh, finishing up that trike here in this video. I go to uh, eBay, like I've mentioned a number of times, and I find parts and things that I need. And here's um, a, a saved search that I have. It's uh, the Thunder Bikes. And I started looking through it, looking at the parts and everything like that. And I saw the, uh, the back hubs and everything. Then I saw this one right here missing a head but let's look at it a little bit further yeah the head's gone but someone turned this bugger into a uh, quad runner look at that look at that and then when i first saw this picture i'm going how do they keep that axle you know aligned and there you go i just don't i don't know how they would do that you know what i mean so i don't know if the front tires are actually working or not but someone did a quad. I, I had thought about doing one like that, and um, I, I just never have uh, completed it. But seeing that somebody's already done this, and this has got to be from years, yeah, years and years um, ago. Uh, yeah, here it is, here it is. Um, look, look at this blue background, this blue background, this one, uh, more of them, what is that? Six, seven, eight, they all have the same blue background. So I'm thinking it's got to be from one seller, you know, it's got to be from one seller. It's just my casual observation at this point. And then look at this one right here. I'm going, that doesn't look like a standard T-Jet or a th Thunder Bike uh, rear. So go, well, let's just go and look at this. Okay. Wow. So he did a trike as well. Wow. And look what he did with the um, back. He used front hubs for the back there. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It works. It works. You can't you can tell it's a little bit dusty and hadn't been run for a while, but uh, boy, that that method works. Um, the the trikes that I've been making have a bit of a wider wheelbase, but this just anything other than the straight inline tires with these um, Thunder bikes, it works real good. You know, it works real good. Let's see what else he had. There is one or two others that caught my attention. I mean, just really neat stuff. So wh whoever this is, they're, um, was it, no, was that one? Okay, I'll definitely find it and put it in the video. But uh, interesting how um, the, the people have been wanting to do trikes because the, the Thunder Bikes fall over. You know, they just fall over, they fall over. Then I also had a, another observation. Um, this one, uh, this one right here this one right here the uh, the thing they have in common i'm looking for more i don't see any more the thing they have in common is they're missing the head one of the uh parts that i'm missing for the uh project to work right now is the head so um we have to duplicate a head and um which also i noticed on uh, uh, some of these the guide pin is missing so i'm thinking about reproducing the guide pin as well um shouldn't be too hard you know get a couple of them make a mold of it and we'll go from there but anyways i wanted to show you these um uh what's currently up on ebay for the thunder bikes and it's just it, it, it's amazing to me that uh people just really want the trikes they want to race the thunder bikes but they don't want them to uh, fall off over the turns all right very good let's get into it all right guys you've seen this this is the thunder trike that we uh, built a couple of videos ago and I love it. It runs real good. It has a very, very, very fast chassis. This is the one that we're going to make some parts for. So it needs the gas tank. I know I've made a mold for the gas tank. Probably going to redo that though. I really wasn't happy with the way it came out. So I think we can improve upon that. And we're also missing the head. So those are the two things that we need to complete this. Uh, recently off of eBay, I got this one. And the reason I, I bid for it is because the head was already off and it's separate, it's separate. The uh, auction stated that the uh, chassis almost runs and when I touched the transformer, it was right. It just it just sparked, that's all it did, just sparked. Uh, a few minutes ago, I took it apart, cleaned it, it runs real good now. So I'll be making a duplicate of the head and we're gonna be uh, redoing the uh, gas tank. And I'm, again, probably going to get some um, guide pins because I know a lot of these, um, you know, if you order a guide pin off of eBay, you're spending 20 bucks plus shipping. So if I can make them cheaper and if people need them, uh, I'll be a good source to get them from and uh, I won't be charging 20 bucks. I really won't. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. 
Okay, good. I was just trying to think of some other things I could uh, make a mold of while I got the Aluma light and everything, and I got the front uh, light and fender. We're gonna do the head, the gas tank. I found some heads that uh, we can uh, do. And what I was really looking for uh, just a bit ago was my mold boxes. I got my mold boxes. Um, we're gonna reuse those again to have to make them. And here's some of the bodies and heads and things I did about a year ago. I was calling around and I was trying to find people who, uh, you know, had some of the heads and drivers and nobody was reproducing them. So guess what? I thought I would. <laughs> I thought I would. So I'm gonna use those mold boxes again. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is we gotta do uh, one decide on what we're going to make molds of, and I think I have plenty there. I don't think I'm gonna make one mold. I'll probably make the fender light and the gas uh, tank as one mold, and then I think I'm gonna do all the heads. What do we got? Half a dozen heads there, or six, seven heads, plus the uh, fender bike head. That might be a separate mold as well. All right, let me go ahead and get the clay out. All right, I just got my clay out, I'm trying to make it a little bit more pliable. I'll, I'll work on that some. But you'll notice all the pieces have like a, a, a mold line on them. There has to be a top mold and a bottom mold. So I'm gonna do my best when I'm uh, uh, trying to reproduce these things to use the same mold lines that Aurora did. So let me go ahead and work on the clay a little bit more then we'll get started on it. Just got the clay pliable and I pushed the cast tank down into it. I'm gonna do the same thing with the uh, front fender and the light there and then we'll go ahead and get some clay and uh, work on the uh, rest of the heads over there. Got my clay all set for the heads so what I'll do is I'll take the heads and I'll line them up uh, side by side and I'll put them there uh, face down, mash them in right to the uh, 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 mold line and then we should be all set. Alright, I got all the uh, heads face down into the clay and they uh, look like I got them right where I want them. So I'm going to uh, take the uh, fender, the gas tank, uh, get rid of some of this excess clay, go, uh, go ahead and fit them into the uh, mold boxes, and we'll get ready to do the uh, uh, pouring of the rubber, the aluminum. I think I need to use the uh, one mold box. It looks like everything's going to fit real good. So um, let me go ahead and get the aluminum out, and we will be doing some rubber pouring. I got a couple of kits of the Alumalite. Uh, they're about 19 bucks. They're very, very, very inexpensive. And I can't say enough good about this product. They give you the rubber, they give you the um, uh, plastic, got some clay in there, they got the mixing cups and everything. And again, if you're trying to get into this, uh, like making your own parts and having fun with that, 19 bucks to find out if you like doing it, that, that, that's pretty, you know, that, that, that's very, very inexpensive. Uh, also, uh, between the last segment and this segment, I've had a number of uh, things come in from eBay and we got some really cool projects. This uh, Maserati, I really like the way the guy painted it. I wish he wouldn't have used a paintbrush. I wish he would have sprayed it. So we're going to restore that bugger. Uh, see the crummy uh, Batmobile there? I've got the windshields on and um, the, the, the chassis here, a uh, good buddy of mine, Sammy, sent me this chassis. He was cleaning it, he says, a little too uh, vigorously, and then the light bulb uh, went out. So we're going to go ahead and exchange the light bulb, and I'm actually going to do it with a red one, and there'll be a red turbo light coming out of the uh, chrome Batmobile there. Uh, these pieces never been mounted. The Mach and the, uh, the uh, Corvette never been mounted. I've got uh, windshields, I've got the front and back bumpers for them, and what I want to do, since I like them so much, I'm going to go ahead and uh, spray them chrome. I'm going to use the uh, Molotov chrome and spray those two chrome. I'm going to dig it. I love when they're all chromed out like that. Got a couple of chassis that come in, a couple of truck chassis. They'll need to be uh, refurbished and running well. Touch them to the uh, transformer. Uh, one of them runs and turns over the own sparks and tries to turn over. So we'll, we'll uh, address that. Okay, so we're still working on the uh, parts here for the... Um, Thunder bikes, and one thing I just did is I got some of the uh, the uh, uh, guide pins, and I, and I uh, put one of them in here. I didn't originally have it in here, so when we pour the rubber over it, we'll be able to duplicate the uh, guide pins as well. All right, let me go ahead and un unbox the uh, Illumilite. Okay, good. I got the uh, Illumilite unboxed here. I've got the rubber compound. It's a 10 to 1 ratio. Uh, what I've always done is I've always used every bit of it. I've just, you know, even there's a little bit left over, yeah, I get, I, I get it, you're, you're wasting some, but I always um, just mix 
part A to part B, uh, stir it thoroughly, and then do a pour. That's the way I've always done it. Very good. I, I'm getting ready to mix the alumni together, and I was just reading it again. I, I read it many times, but it says it's got a 30-minute work time. So there's no rush with this stuff. As soon as you apply them and stir them, just stir really, really good, and you know you, you, we should be fine. So what I'm going to do now is uh, just pour every bit of it in there, and then I'm going to probably uh, hold it in front of me and stir it. But if there's a 10 to 1 ratio and you mix every bit of this uh, uh, accelerant with the rubber, it's a perfect ratio, uh, absolutely perfect ratio. Okay, so there's probably a little bit left in there. And again, I'm gonna hold that in front of me and go ahead and get it mixed real good. Just been mi mixing for a few seconds, but you see how swirly it looks? The instructions say keep mixing until it's a consistent uh, color. So I'm gonna keep doing that. All right, I might stir it just a couple more times, but it, it looks like it's all one color, all one consistency. Again, let me just go ahead and uh, observe it closer. A couple more stirs and we're gonna go ahead and pour it. Very good, I'm getting ready to pour it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a very small stream and I'm just gonna let it hit here in the corner and then just find its way to self leveling uh, it off. You don't wanna pour you know it all in you know all over everything just do a little uh, in the corner there and then it'll self level and uh, we should be good so let me go ahead and start that get this out of the way and again there is no hurry just pour slowly and when you do it like a small stream like this you're literally getting all the air bubbles out or most of them you know what i mean there, there's still that some that could uh, get in there but you're you're really trying to just to pour slow and let it seek its own uh, level or height. You know what I mean? That's what you do. Just keep pouring in the same spot and let it do its thing. It should get in all the nooks and crannies, and uh, hopefully enough, we're gonna have enough to cover everything here. Uh, I just started thinking about that. Yeah, we got about a half more, so let's see what we can do. It's coming out then. Okay. All right, we, we did good. I'm just gonna go ahead and set that aside. I scraped the inside of the uh, little tub there and I'm just gonna let this dry. And if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, like eight to 18 hours before it dries. So we're just gonna let it uh, do its thing and that'll be good for a bit. All right, I've got that set aside. It's gonna be drying for a number of hours. I decided to uh, go ahead and get the uh, Batmobile off. What we're gonna do uh, next is we're going to remove the uh, factory bulb there and install, uh, what I'm going to do is install one of these red bulbs. Not up front, but it's going to be coming back out of the uh, back of the Batmobile. It's like the turbo light. So uh, let me uh, reposition the camera and we'll get after it. Okay, in order to get the factory bulb out, it, 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 you could just literally pull the wire. That, that's fine, but I'd rather not. If you just lift up a little bit right there on that uh, little clamp that's holding it in, the wire should just come right out. We're gonna do it on both sides. There it comes. Good. Let's go ahead and do it to the other side. Again, just lift up underneath that wire. There's like a little clamp holding it in place. If you can uh, just get the exacto underneath of it, just a little bit, the wire should come out. A little bit more. And see what we get. There we go. There we go. Let's just go ahead and pull the ball out. Oh, it went shooting out. <laughs> it went shooting out. Okay, good. Good. We can go ahead and get these wires out then. We're not going to be needing those or using those anymore. All right, good. Now, one, one thing we uh, might have to do, depending on the wheelbase, and I think we're going to, the Batmobile has a short wheelbase. So if we're going to use this chassis for the Batmobile, this brass plate that um, on the top plate here, it's going to have to come off. It's going to have to come off. Let's go ahead and do that next. Uh, to do this, and I've done it a number of times, I'm going to take the needle nose and just literally 
twist it after I get it and it should break off right there. I'm gonna hold it in front of me to do that though. Do it really easy getting that uh, uh, brass piece out. Now I'm going to have to move the uh, wheels to the uh, shorter wheelbase. Then we'll go ahead and uh, get the light in there. Here are the bulbs I've used for years and years. They're made uh, by uh, model power, uh, 14 volts. I'm gonna get them out of the package. These, these things work great. Just tested all three bulbs after I got them out of the package. Uh, this will be the one that we're gonna use. So let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and feed the wires into the um, holes right behind the uh, front axle there. Again, let me go ahead and get this in front of me, just a sec. All right, very good. We don't need much coming through there. We just need to get enough to where it'll hook back onto those little clamps that we had. But uh, we got way too much uh, wire on this end, so I'm gonna shorten it up because here's what here's what I'm gonna do with it. It should come out here, and then the wire's gonna go along the body. It's gonna go underneath the engine clamp, and it's gonna come out to the back here, uh, kind of kink, and then turn out for the back turbo light. So that that's the way I'm gonna go ahead and set it up. And when I, I cut the wire, I'm gonna make sure I have got plenty. There we go, did good. I've got it uh, coming from behind the front axle, just like I said, around the side here, and then it does that little um, uh, S-curvy thing right there, and that should be plenty of room to get it out the back turbo there. Good. This side, we're going to have to uh, measure and cut cut the length that we need, and it um, should only take a second. Let me get my exacto. All right, good. I'm gonna cut them just a little bit long. I'm gonna cut them up just a little bit long, strip the wire, and then we, we should have uh, plenty to hook on those little clamps. Okay, very good. We got the um, wires trimmed, and uh, I've got the uh, insulation off there. I'm just gonna tuck them under those clamps and then push the clamps back down to where they were before we started the whole project. All right, I got the uh, wires clamped back in place, and I need to turn the transformer and we shall see if what we did works. We're looking for that red light to glow in the back there. All right, can I see what we got? Yes, we, yes, we do, yes, we do, yes, we do. We're in good shape. We're in good shape. Great. Fantastic. Let's get back over here. Okay, so I don't think that this Batmobile's ever been mounted. I'm going to go ahead and get those screw posts working so we can get this chassis on. Just started both the screws in there a little bit, so I'm gonna uh, get them down to where they need to be. We got a ways to go here, but they're both started real good. Pretty sure I got them uh, screwed in as far as I need them to get the chassis, the guide pin on, all that stuff. So let me back the uh, screws out and we'll see if we can get that chassis on. Another thing we have to do, I just thought about it, is the back turbo. We're gonna have to uh, drill that hole out to accommodate the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the turbo light. Uh, let me see if we can do that real quick. Okay, I found a uh, drill bit I'm gonna use to start the um, process. So we might have to widen it a little bit, but this will at, at least get us um, through the back here. Again, if we have to widen it for the bulb just a little bit, that's fine, that's fine. All right, feels like we're just about through. And as I'm doing this, I'm realizing the drill bit, uh, it's a bit, uh, it's, it's, it's like wobbly. <laughs> it's wobbly. It's got a bend in it. Must have fell and hit the uh, ground once. Don't recall if that happened, but it must have. It must have. All right. Very good. All right, we'll get rid of some more of this. Okay. We are doing good. And again, we should get through it here in just a sec. Well, I'm probably going to have to get some more uh, drill bits. This one's not only bent, it, I'm just trying to get through plastic here, and it, it, it's, boy, it's taking some time. I figured I'd be through already. There we go. I can feel it go through. Okay, very good. Just a sec. All right, I, I kept boring that hole out until I made that light fit in there uh, real good so that, you know, there's no... Uh, give with it whatsoever. All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get the uh, back screw in and we'll get this chassis on. 
Okay, just set it on the track of the transformer. And just so we can see it, I'm gonna stop it from going. We're just looking at the light. Yeah, I like it, like it, like it. Not as red as I like. Uh, I tell you what, we'll put a little uh, touch of red paint on that light, but it fits the turbo housing really, 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 really good. All right, let's look into a little bit further. One thing I'm not wild about is the uh, sponge tires and how um, unchromed the, the uh, hubs are. So I'm probably gonna get some uh, new tires, new rims for this thing, and then we're also gonna have to put uh, the front and back windshield on, and we're also gonna have to get heads for this. Uh, we're making heads, so we're gonna have plenty. We're gonna have plenty. As soon as we get the heads uh, produced, we'll go ahead and get them uh, all chromed out, and then we should be done with the project. Okay, we are doing good. I got some of the new old stock uh, hubs there, and I got some new old stock uh, tires. And I, I said it before, but what's interesting about the new old stock tires is the uh, diameter of the hole in the center there. If they haven't been used and stretched out over the last uh, 50 years, 50 plus years, um, they're, they're tiny, they're tiny, and they're, they're hard to get on sometimes. So uh, let me go and get these off the card, and then we'll put them uh, on the Batmobile, and it should look better. And what I did with the, um, let's see if I can get it here. Place it in here. I, I touched the, um, the, the turbo light with the red mark, or red paint. I think I turned it off. <laughs> yeah, that looks better. That looks better. That's more red coming out. So I like that. I like that a lot. All right, very good. Just got the hubs and the tires on all around. Looks great. Looks absolutely wonderful. Boy. Okay, what else? We have the hedge out. They're drying over there. But uh, we're going to hit, uh, put the windshields on, see how it looks, probably get it on the track after that. Well, it's looking good with the uh, windshields on. It's almost hard to tell that they're on. They're, they're uh, you know, they're very clear. Uh, it's on the track, transforming the draw. Let's see what we get. Oh, smooth, very smooth. Boy, got some good juice to it too. Fantastic, looking good. Looking absolutely wonderful. Boy, I'm gonna have some fun with this. Okay, once again, the uh, heads, they're over there drying. I don't dare mess with that stuff till like uh, tomorrow morning, something like that. So uh, I'm probably gonna end the video right now and post it and then start like a, uh, uh, another video uh, uh, tomorrow or something like that. But guys, I hope you enjoyed that, uh, making the heads the, uh, with the rubber and uh, the Batmobile coming out absolutely wonderful. Not done yet, but we're getting close. All right guys, see ya.